If you're building a drone program for a police or fire department, you've probably already run into this question. Should we fly under Part 107, get a Certificate of Authorization, or COA, or do both? Well, there's a lot of confusion online about what's legal and what the FAA actually expects from public safety agencies. So let me give you the real story of what departments are doing today. Hey everyone, Adam here from UAV Coach, where we've helped public safety drone teams across the country earn their Part 107 from the NYPD to the Carbondale and Rural Fire Protection District. So here's what you need to know regarding Part 107 and COAs. According to the FAA, federal, state, and local government offices can fly UAVs or drones to support specific missions, such as search and rescue, under either the FAA's Part 107 rule or by obtaining a COA. Part 107 is where almost everyone starts. It's faster, easier, and more scalable than a COA. Every pilot gets certified by taking the FAA's Part 107 test, and that instantly gives your agency a legal framework to operate for things like search and rescue, overwatch, accident investigation, fire support, and disaster response. On the other hand, a COA can provide a great deal of flexibility for your drone operations, but it's also a longer and more difficult process to obtain one than it is to obtain a remote pilot certificate through the Part 107 rules. To be more specific, when it comes to the flexibility a COA can provide, the Part 107 rules prohibit flying beyond visual line of sight, flying over people, and flying above 400 feet. Although you can apply for a waiver or special authorization for each of these types of activities, these applications can be slow to process and in some cases may not be issued at all. But if you have a COA, you'll have permission to routinely fly within certain regions of controlled airspace, permission to fly over people in the event of a life safety incident, and you can request other special provisions to be named in your COA, depending on the specific needs of your operations. But again, COAs come with more paperwork, more responsibility, and more documentation. The FAA wants to see your SOPs, your pilot training plan, air risk mitigations, chain of command, equipment specs, all of it. That's why getting a COA can take months. But once you have it, you can also request emergency COAs in as little as a few hours for urgent missions. So COAs are still very important, but they're just not the starting point anymore. The smartest approach we see today from successful public safety drone teams is a hybrid one. Part 107 for foundation and consistency, and a COA layered on top for advanced operations. You train all of your pilots under Part 107, meaning they each take the Part 107 exam, so you're legally covered, insured, and standardized. Then you apply for a COA if you think you'll need advanced capabilities, like beyond visual line of sight down the line. And if you're looking for a starting point to get your officers or employees Part 107 certified, we have Drone Pilot Ground School, a leading online test prep course that will help you and your team pass on the first try. We've helped public safety departments nationwide, and we can't wait to help you too. Check it out in the first link below. If you want to dive deeper into COAs or how other departments are building their drone programs, I linked our other guides below. Let us know if you have any questions about COAs or Part 107, and if you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our future drone videos. Until next time, blue skies and safe flying.